Welcome to Regis Pre-Algebra. This is Lesson 31A. I trust you all are doing very well and you're keeping up on your work. Um, looking forward to seeing you all again as soon as things relax a little here. But uh, again, as always, you're always invited to text me. If you have any questions or concerns, please do text me. 505-301-1357. So please feel free to text me. What do you want to include? The course you're in, the um, lesson number and problem number that's concerning to you, or if you are just confused about the homework, if you're if you're getting behind, I don't know why you would be confused about the homework, but if you assignment, but go ahead and text me if you have general questions about the concepts, for sure do that. Just include. Uh, that it, this is pre-algebra class, and I'm confused about 8.31. Will you go over it again? Something like that. Anything like that is good feedback for me. Now let's go ahead and go to Psalm 93. This is a wonderful psalm. As you can see, we're kind of working through the psalms together. And I'm going to read the entire thing, and then we're going to go to the focal point of the psalm, which I consider the, the key verse, and that will be verse 4. Altogether, it says, the Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. Look at all the certainty he's expressing here. Then we uh, continue on. The floods doesn't mean everything's just stable as can be, okay? That expression is one of kind of eternal confidence that God is reigning. But now in verses 3 and 4, he shifts, and he says, The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. Declaring the same idea three times. In other words, times are tumultuous. We could say that in the middle of a tsunami, but it doesn't have to be literal floods, does it? It, has, it can be figurative. Some, anything that rises up in our lives and looks overwhelming. So he then focuses in on verse 4, his declaration of faith. He says, the Lord on high is mightier. I love that. Than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. Say that first phrase out loud. You will be glad you did. The Lord on high is mightier than anything that confronts me. Now fill in a blank. The Lord on high is mightier than COVID-19. Fill in the blank. The Lord on high is mightier than this problem in my life. This lo- The Lord on high is mightier than this sin I'm struggling with. The Lord on high is mightier than this need I have or the need that's in my family or the health issue or the inadequacy issue that you're sensing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Guess what? The Lord on high is mightier. He continues on. Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. I think this is one of the reasons I love to read the Psalms. David shows all the gamut of emotions that you and I struggle with in life. All the gamut of challenges. He's not afraid to state them. And yet at the end of every Psalm, or maybe 99% of them, I, maybe there's one out there, he, he finishes up overwhelmed, but I don't think so. <laughs> he always ends on this note. You know what? God's bigger. You know what? I can still trust him. You know what? He's in charge, and he's on my side. So, Lord, we are grateful for who you are. You're bigger than us, and you're bigger than every circumstance that surrounds us. And we put our trust in you and declare today, together, that you are my dear. Thank your holy name. Amen. 
Now let's go ahead and start today. We're going to read our answers. Of course, our normal pattern, we read the answers. I comment on anything that might have struggled, you, you might have struggled with. If I try to anticipate some of those things, we'll have two new concepts in 8.30 and 8.31, and then I'll assign the homework. Pretty simple today, especially because these concepts don't happen to be particularly hard. Remember, we're going to be talking, I'm going to review the concepts just very quickly for 827 through 829. The concepts begin with a description of our three concept or our three shapes we're going to deal with. This is called a parallelogram. Why? Because this line is parallel to this line and this line is parallel to this line. Parallelogram. This, of course, whether I draw it this way or whether I draw it this way or any other way, three sides, um, this is a triangle. And then the next one starts off kind of looking like a parallelogram, but the last side is not parallel. So I could draw it that way. I could have drawn it that that way back here, not 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 all the way to a triangle, but it doesn't matter if I drew it. Let me put that in red here. If I drew this last one here, as long as I'm not, not a triangle, okay, or here, or way out here, it doesn't matter. Those three choices on your last side, draw three sides of a parallelogram. Oops. So that side's parallel to that side. But then this length can be anything, and you attach it anything but equal. Because <laughs> if it's equal, if this value here is equal to this value here, then you will have a parallelogram. All right, so this is called what? Trapezoid, triangle, you know that, and parallelogram. Okay, so these are the two I want you to make distinctions with. Now, we're talking about how do we find the areas of those threes. So the area of a parallelogram, we'll just put a P there, okay, is going to be base times height. And you can go back, you can just memorize that formula, or you can go back to the last lesson and see why. The area of a triangle is going to be one half base times height. And again, you can memorize that or you can go back and see why from the last lesson. And then the area of the trapezoid is going to be a little more complicated. It's going to be the uh, before I write that, let me just go ahead and draw a bigger diagram of a trapezoid so I can label the parts. This is the height. This is B1. This is B2. Okay, now that I've got that in there, it's going to be the height, and this is the vertical height, as it is also here, vertical height. That um, means perpendicular to the to the horizontal, right? So it's the height times let me get where I can write B1 plus B2 all over two. Now again, you can memorize it or you can go back and understand it so you can derive it. I don't care, whichever you find easiest right now. Now let's go ahead and talk about our answers. For 8.27, you're just using that first uh, formula, which is they're all parallelograms, and so we're going to say base times height divide by 2. Or, no, no division by 2, I'm sorry. We're parallelograms, just base times height. So number 1 is 70 square feet. Number 2, 18 square feet. Number 3, 78.66 
square inches. Number four, 2,451 square feet. Number five, 208.32 square inches. Number six, 235 I'm sorry, I read it wrong, 237.5 square feet. I would go ahead and for the height and tra um, go ahead and say, use 12.5 as opposed to 12 and one half. For number seven, 7,904 square feet. And for number eight is the only one at all that's at all complicated. The others, all you're going to do is um, multiply, right? Base times height, but this one it has fractions, so we'll come back and do that. The answer should be nine square feet, and number ten it's one point two times point nine. So make sure you're dealing with your decimals properly. It's one point oh eight square feet. Now let's look at eight together. It's three and three fourths times two and two fifths. I think I might have even done this on the last time. But we'll change this to improper 15 fourths times 12 fifths. 5 goes into 15 3 times. 4 goes into 12 um, 3 times. And 3 times 3 equals 9 square feet. And that's all there is to 8.27. Let's go to the next page. Okay, we're on 8.28. You're, we're supposed to do 1 through 9 on the problems, all, all of the uh, 1 through 4 on the problem solving, and on the sharpening skills, 1 through 9. All right, so this is the area of the triangle. Remember, the area of the triangle is 1 half times base times height. And the ba uh, the height is perpendicular, or the vertical height. Okay, so number one, our answer should be twenty one square feet because we're taking one half six times four. I mean six times seven times one half. Okay, number two, forty two square inches. Number three, let's see. Um, 39.44 square inches. Number four, 9.75 square feet. So, number five, 23.2 square yards. Number six, 35,100 square yards. Number seven, 342 square feet. Number eight, 116 square yards. And number nine, which I'll do for you, is two and, whoops, I'm sorry, four and two-thirds square feet. Now, um, sometimes it's easier, in almost all of these, it's easier to take one half of it and then multiply. In other words, the first one, this is a good, we have a six, our height is six feet, our base is seven feet, and we want to take one half base times the height for a triangle to get our area. So what I would do is I would first take the even one, half of that is 3, 3 times 7 is 21. So it's easier to do the half first almost always. Now let's look at the number 8. Number 8 says 
no, that's not the one I care about. Um, I want, I care about nine. I want the fraction one. Sorry. Okay, so I went ahead and did number nine, worked it out. The key here is go ahead and write your one, your formula right here. Then when you plug in, plug in improper fractions. And then doing your canceling, you're going to get 14 thirds, then convert it back to a mixed number. Now problem solving, we're going to read the answers. Number one, 120 acres. Number two, four times as great. Number three, four feet. And number four, 17 and one-third square feet. Or you could write it as 2,496 square inches. Now let me go ahead and look at those a minute and make any comments that I think you might need. Uh, let's go ahead and review number one for the problem solving. It says a triangular piece of land has a height of one-half mile and a base of three-fourths. So we have one-half times the height, which is one-half, times the base, which is three-fourths. So that would be three-sixteenths of a square mile. And um, it says the find the number of acre, acres. Well, one acre, or one square mile, I'm sorry, one square mile equals 640 acres. So if you take the 640, this is kind of a key, right? And you want to have this memorized. And so take 640 times 3 16th and that would, would give you 120 acres. Okay, number two in the problem solving says this. If the lengths of the base and the height are doubled, okay, so let's think about this. Let's say this is my base, this is my height, but now, so it would be one half base times height would be the original area. But now if I double this, it would now be that and that. So it would be one half times the base is now 2B and the height is now 2H. So this would be one half times 4BH. Or it would be four times as great. If I compare this to this, it would be four times as great. You don't have to know that one, but that's a good problem, actually. Okay, but if that doesn't quite make sense to you yet, if you're younger mathematically, it doesn't matter. Don't worry, fret that. Okay, and the other ones... Uh, Triangular flower bed, those two are straightforward. Okay, now let's go to then our sharpening skills for the answers for those. The sharpening skills are, whoops, I'm sorry, are 7 through 17. And my answers are going to be, let me make sure I've got the right one. Never mind, sharpening skills one through nine. The answer is quickly, these are all review. The area equals 90 square feet. Next, 68.89 square inches. Next, 14.4 square yards. Next, 342.35 square feet. Next, 38 square feet. Next, 500 square feet. Next, 5.805 square feet, next 441 square inches, next 80 square yards. No new ideas. So let's go on then to the new concepts. Oops, I'm really kind of rushing it here. I'm sorry, let's go on now to the 
8.29, the area of the trapezoid. Recall the area of the trapezoid is going to be the height times the sum of the top and the bottom, base 1 plus base 2, and then divide by 2. Or you could divide by 2 in, with the height if, it, if that works out. So there's only three problems. All right, that's going to be easy. The first one is going to be 108.5 square feet, then 189 square inches, then we're going to say uh, 3 times uh, 9, that'd be 27, and divide by 2, and it should be 13.5 square yards. Nothing to it, just follow the formula, make sure you're doing all the parts. All right, that's all our review. Let's go for our new concepts. They aren't very hard this time. The first one is going to be the area of a circle. And they have a great description of how they derive that. And so if you're the kind of person that likes to understand it visually, it, I'm going to not teach that because they have a very good job to understand the visual representation for how they get this formula on page 340. So if you don't want to just memorize and you want to see it, okay, visual um, presentation, go to page 340. But what we're talking about is the area of a circle and we're simply going to have you memorize this formula and go, go up if you like to see it because that's always very helpful. Okay, it is for me. Okay, so the area of a circle is pi r squared. And so otherwise, just memorize it. So if you have a radius of 4 inches, then 4 times 4 is 16 pi would be your area. Or 16 times 3.14, which ends up being 50.24 square inches. And I always like to just write inches squared. You could do that, or you could write SQ inches. Doesn't matter. Okay? So there's nothing complicated in that. If you go to then the problem solving, which you will, um, One of those is based, will be easier to solve. Let's see which one. Um, yeah, the first two are, are kind of good. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to just drop that problem solving. I think all, all four of them would need some explanation. We'll, do, we'll just cancel that for right now. Okay. Okay, so that's... Um, 8.30 and then 8.31 is a wonderful, actually, um, lesson. I really enjoy this lesson because they walk you through harder ideas one step at a time and he leads you through the logic. In other words, let's say I want to find the area of this. And I know that the base is 40, and this little height right here is 10 feet, and the, ba the base is 40. How would I do that? Well, I would do that as a two-step problem. I would find the area of the rectangle, so I'd also need to know the area of that rectangle. Uh, I'd need to know the height, which is 15. Okay. So if I had those three dimensions, then I could find first the area of the rectangle, then the area of the triangle, and add them together. And he has several problems like that. He might have another one that says this. Okay, let's say I have the area, uh, a figure like this, and I want to know the area of this, the donut shape. What would it be? How would I figure that out? Well, I would find the area of the larger like that, the area of the whole larger circle and I would subtract out the area of the smaller circle. 
Okay. And he's going to lead you through several problems like that, but he has you do it in steps. And so I appreciate that. And I don't think that I'll explain much on it, but you're always free to do what? Text me. Either text me this week when you're trying to do it the first time, or text me after you see the answers next week. But I don't think I'll explain these to you much um, because I think that you're going to be able to do these and you'll feel a great deal of satisfaction by being able to do these problems on your own. So let's talk about the homework. Okay, your homework is very straightforward here. I dropped off that one section of problem solving. Your sharpening skills... Um, Everything's very, very straightforward. Go ahead and use a calculator if you'd like to. That's fine, but it's also good to get some practice with mental math. So I would not do them all with a calculator. And then um, if you have not sent, already sent in test 5 and quiz 21, I am going to hand, uh, send by email another quiz on Wednesday, quiz Um, hang on, tw hang on. <laughs> okay, apologies. So, um, this is your homework that you should be to catch up. You should have done by Wednesday. These have already been sent. These three test five, quiz twenty one, and quiz twenty two, and I will send another quiz on Wednesday on lesson. 31B. I will send that, and then I want all mailed by Friday. Okay, so quiz 23 will be sent on Wednesday. Lesson 31B, and all mailed by Friday. By this coming Friday. Okay, so God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week.